I'm here with Stephen Espinosa, uh, executive at Showtime. How are you doing, Stephen? Uh, it's been an exciting week. I'm a little, uh, a little tired, a little travel worn, but uh, it's still ready to go. Um, how has it been being in four different cities on four different days, and also the emotional strain as well as the physical strain for yourself, who's also been uh, probably involved a little bit more than people would have thought? I, I, I have been involved more than, than I expected. Um, you know, it, it is a strain, it is asking a lot, uh, even with just four cities. Um, we would have liked to do more cities, but really time didn't allow. Um, so it, it is a significant commitment from from everybody involved, from the networks, from uh, from the UFC, from Showtime, from uh, from the media that are, that are covering it. Um, but with an event like this, it was important that we you know, share um, share the, the sort of unique nature of the event, the energy of the event um, on, a, on a wide level. So uh, everyone sort of makes the, the, uh, the sacrifice. Um, you know, you, you go four or five days with little sleep and a lot of air travel, um, but I think you look back on it and we see the ripples of conversation continuing to spread, you know, for days and possibly weeks afterwards. Um, and it's, it's worth every second of it. Sure, and uh, obviously I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't touch on the, uh, the mm -hmm. incidents between you and Connor mm -hmm. this week. Uh, first time you've worked with Connor? Yes, it is. Will there be a second time you work with Connor McGregor? Uh, you know, I hope so. You know, he is, he's a, a, a fascinating individual, um, very talented as a fighter, um, but you're probably up there as one of the top two or three uh, most quotable, most charismatic athletes. Um, you, you really put him on the same caliber of, as you know the rock um, it's hard to say sort of Ali because it's you know he's a almost mythical figure but his ability to command a stage to improvise to be funny to be charming to be you know at, at some points offensive uh, and dial it back he is a true performer it's it's a skill that that cannot be learned I, I didn't actually expect uh, that some of it would be uh, aimed at me. Um, why do you think that was? I mean, a lot of people are talking about the fact that the mics were cut off. I mean, is that why, or is there something that we don't know about um, potentially? You know, I, I I really wouldn't chalk it up to the mics because you know we we made the effort after the LA stop to explain that that was one of several uh, technical glitches. There were some videos that didn't play, and some music, and some more other things. It was the first stop, so not everything was perfect. So um, I think. It, it, if anything, that's an that's an excuse. You know, the microphone gate is is sort of uh, overblown. Um, and if it's the association for Floyd, or if it's uh, a way to psych himself up, um, a way to create you know windmills to to battle, um, you know, sure. Well, uh, it, it I guess comes with the territory. It's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, can, I, can I just ask one question? Sure. Uh, can start the boxing purist question? Sure, please. Um, because you know boxing correspondents don't like this, they regard it as a travesty. Mm -hmm. What's your response to that? Should this be happening? One knows why it is, mm -hmm. but why, in your view, you know, how do you answer that question? Is, is well, it really sport? Well, I, I think if, uh, if this fight were scheduled um, five years ago, six years ago, uh, when Floyd was in his prime, I don't think it would happen. Um, I think the age adds an element of risk. I think at... You know, in his mid-30s, even uh, you know, early 30s, I mean, Floyd was, was essentially untouchable, and I don't think you'd see that. Part of the question uh, at this point, which I think you know, some of the fans are responding to, is what does Floyd have left? Two years out of the ring, and at, at those two years being from 38 to 40, which physiologically are, are important years you know, in the average you know, man's physiology. So uh, would it be happening at Floyd's peak? Probably not. It wouldn't be salvable. You know, I'm, uh, it's you know, the doubt that it, makes the fight. It, it is, and and if you look at, at the most competitive fights that Floyd has had lately, I mean, you probably look at the Madonna fight. Um, we thought Canelo would be competitive; it really wasn't. We thought Pacquiao would be more competitive; it was pretty one-sided. The guy that was more competitive, you know, Marcos Madonna, um, was far from a tactician. He's a rough, tough, aggressive guy, a little bit wild. You know, those are all the same adjectives which, you know, describe Conor McGregor. So I'm not saying he's, you know, Marcos Maidana, but that's a pretty good blueprint of how to attack a 40-year-old Floyd Mayweather.